Welcome back to Good Day and Mother Knows Best. We have <laughs> uh, our few mothers missing this morning, but we have our lovely Pat and Janet mm -hmm. and yeah. a special guest, Tukey. And Tukey is in disguise this morning as a giraffe. <laughs> But um, we, we're talking first, we do want to talk about Halloween a little bit later, but we want to talk first. The reason why Tukey is here is uh, because we're talking about pets and how do you know if your family is ready for a pet? Well, I think mom has to be on board. <laughs> mom and dad need to be united for, on that one, definitely, because and in my family, I'll confess, we don't have pets. We oh, yeah. probably won't have pets because mom's not on board with that. I grew up with dogs. My husband grew up with dogs. And personally, that's why we're not having a dog. Because oh. I loved it when, when she was a little puppy. And then she got big. And my, my folks were totally, you know, they just kind of took over everything. So I don't want to do that. I see. And yeah. that's what happens. Mm -hmm. that's, it's all, mama better figure she's going to wind up taking yep. care of the dog. Because yeah. when they're really cute and they're a little tiny puppy, everybody wants to right. play with them. Then you start having potty training accidents, mm -hmm. and they're <laughs> chewing up your iPod yeah. or your phone, and kids don't want it anymore. And Tukey, believe it or not, is 15. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think first, the very first thing you have to think about is this is a long commitment. Mm -hmm. The smaller the dog, the longer their lifespan. So a dog like Tukey can actually live to be in its 20s, yeah. where the big wow. dogs usually live maybe to 10 years. So they're not quite the commitment. but are you willing, first off, to make a commitment to take mm. care of this animal for the next 20 years? So no matter how much, when you're in the pet store, the Humane Society, that they give you those eyes, and they say they promise they're going to take care of yeah. everything, it doesn't really happen that way? Well, there's probably exceptions, I'm sure. Um, but I don't want to bank on that. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, so yeah. I. Well, and the thing is, they're expensive, mm -hmm. too. If you do it properly, um, we have nine dogs. I spend a hundred and yeah, I know. Um, I spend one hundred and fifty dollars a month on heartworm preventative alone mm -hmm. for my dogs. That's not even counting food, wow. vet visits, mm -hmm. it, you know, any of the extra stuff. And living in South Georgia, if you don't have your dog on a heartworm preventative, they're definitely going to get heartworms and they mm. die a very slow, painful death when their heart actually bursts. Mm. It's, it's really mm. awful. Um, mm. So you have to do that. You have to be prepared. If you can see Tukey, I don't know if we can see his little tongue hanging out. That's because he, before I rescued him, his teeth weren't taken care of. And his teeth were so rotten they were beyond saving, so mm -hmm. all of his teeth had to be pulled. So he has to have chicken and rice cooked for him and mashed up because he can't eat anything hard. So there's just a lot of responsibility yeah. to it. And dogs are very social creatures. Please don't get a dog if you think you're going to put it in the backyard on a chain. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, not fair to the dog mm -hmm. at all. They're, they love to be with their family. They need to be with their family. They need that love and that interaction. Great, great. You mentioned that responsibility thing. I have friends who say, oh, it's a great tool to teach responsibility. And it's a but, life. Well, but, and believe me, there's other ways to teach responsibility. <laughs> I've got pretty responsible kids if we don't have a pet. So. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. <laughs> or yeah. start with a fish. Or sure. There you go. Yeah. Very good. Well, we're going to be back in just a moment with more of Mother Knows Best. Stay with us. Oh. Welcome back to Good Day and Mother Knows Best. And Janet has brought Tukey in. We're talking about how to know if your family is ready for pets. But we want to show off. He does some, a trick. He does one trick. Okay. okay. <laughs> Tukey, sit. Okay, too quick. High five. Other side, other side. Okay, we'll just do it that way. But he, he did it during the break. <laughs> yes, both he did. sides. He did high fives, but yes. we we had teased him during the break, and he was <laughs> already <laughs> fed up and ready for the treat. He already did it. We, we did it to trust too us, right? soon. Yes. But uh, I wanted to ask you, Pat, if you ever have your kids. You said you don't have pets, but mm -hmm. have your kids ever asked you for one? And how did you handle saying that you didn't feel ready for that? Well, we have had. Pets, um, goldfish. You know, goldfish. Um, my oldest daughter had a turtle one for you know Aww. little pet shop turtle um, for a while. So we've had but short living kind of pets. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've just explained to the kids, and we have babysat for others' parent uh, pets when they've been on vacation, things like that. So they've had a little bit of experience and realized, hmm, wow, this is more you know mm. work than than we anticipated. Because after a week of babysitting somebody else's dog, when you have to walk it and feed mm -hmm. it and just doing the just doing the regular maintenance kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and then we've also, I've also, with our older ones, I actually sat down with them and we added up pet, I mean, um, 
veterinary visits, you know, all the costs, food, all that thing, all that stuff. And they realized how much it cost too. And mm -hmm. well, gee, we can, you know, go on vacation or have a pet. You know, I mean, for us, it right. really at some some points in our life has been kind of like that. Yeah, that's another good point. When you thing. go on vacation, you know, I have to have somebody with so many dogs come stay at my right. house, and that can be costly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's almost like going on a second vacation. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but the, you know, one of the other things I would suggest, if your child is really bugging you for a pet. Have them volunteer with one of the local rescues mm -hmm. or something That's okay. and really, you know, have to work, have to clean poop out of stalls and, you mm -hmm. know, have to see the different temperaments and not all dogs are always sweet and mm -hmm. lovable and those kind of things. But mm -hmm. the one thing I did want to talk about, Kelly, other than the 4th of July, this is the second leading night that pets get lost or injured. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, we're opening and shutting our doors. Mm -hmm. They get frightened of some of the costumes mm -hmm. and they'll bolt. So put your pets away from the front door, put them mm -hmm. in a safe part of the house. And especially it's, you know, black cats on Halloween is mm -hmm. not just a complete fable. People do do bad things to animals on Halloween. So make sure your babies are put away and safe tonight when you go out to trick or treat. Very mm -hmm. smart. Well, we're going to yeah. be back in just a moment to talk more about trick or treating with these moms. Stay with mm -hmm. us. Welcome back to Mother Knows Best. We're talking <laughs> Halloween now. So, you obviously both are dressed up, mm -hmm. and we want to know how do you do Halloween at your home? Go ahead, you can give the history. How did you do with your old? Well, we always would get all the kids together, and we'd go find a really good neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and we go hit a really good neighborhood, you know. <laughs> and I remember back, you know, and you probably remember this too, there was times where the hospitals would actually x-ray when they were having the scares of people mm, yeah, with putting the, things the metal. And they would, the nuts. hospitals would open up on Halloween and you would take your candy and they'd put it through the x-ray machine. That? Yes, what was that done like? That. It was just bizarre to even think you had to go there. Yeah. But, but people were doing really evil, mean things, mm -hmm. you I know. I remember the razor blades and the apples yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I could, yeah. It, it was really yeah. frightening. Um, but now it seems to have gone more, as my grandkids were trick-or-treating, and they're almost all too old to do that now, that we do a lot at the malls, because mm -hmm. that's kind of safe. You feel like that's safe yeah, going there, that, that kind of thing. Um, I live in Camilla, and they're having a thing downtown tonight where all the merchants are going to open, mm -hmm. and so the kids can go around there. We have not had any trick-or-treaters this will be our third Halloween, so mm -hmm. we've not had any. So I'm thinking we may take Tukey and go sit downtown and watch oh, the trick-or-treaters yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be so fun. Well, I remember doing it when I was growing up, but my kids um, have never really enjoyed dressing up. For kind of, and I have to admit that as I got older, I kind of think begging for candy. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm not, we're not big with candy in our house mm -hmm. either. So, um, you know, we, our churches, we've always been part of a church that had, will do a big fall festival kind of thing. And I like that. I mean, I don't like, I don't want to not celebrate. I don't want to be a total Debbie Downer, but I'm just not big into Halloween and, and that, you know. So we do fall festival kind of things and parties. And, sure. Um, but we haven't really done much of the door-to-door -door kind of thing. Okay. I was really hoping I could borrow somebody's child so I could get some candy tonight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. You have to talk to my kids. I told them what we were talking about today, and, and my 14-year-old son said, well, just make sure you point out that it's not safe to go alone, and it's not fun oh, either. That's but You should go true. in groups. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll pass that on. So yes, yeah. Words but, of wisdom. But, yes. That is so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about costumes? You mentioned that your kids weren't really big fans of dressing up, but mm -hmm. did you either have, do you all have kind of guidelines like you can't dress up as this or do you just let them do whatever they want or has it been an issue? We, I never really had an issue with them trying to cross, cross boundaries mm -hmm. but you know I think they knew the, where the line was mm -hmm. anyway. You're not going to go out dressed like you know can I say hoochie? Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did. <laughs> you know, you're not going to go out dressed like that if you're 12. That's mm -hmm. not happening. Or mm -hmm. even 15. Well, yeah. you're not going to be trick or treating at 15, but you're not going to be going out dressed like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we never really had that issue, but I think your kids should know where the boundaries are. Yeah, well, our, our issue, I mean, when we do dress up, because even the fall festival type things at churches, you know, you can come in costume. We just have a flat out rule, no dead people, okay? <laughs> just, <laughs> no ghouls, ghosts, goblins. I don't even like witches. I mean, it's just anything that, you know, can give mom the heebie-jeebies, yeah. that's it. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're not doing it. <laughs> now, uh, what about candy? Do you guys kind of let them do a free for all, and then you go home and you like spread it all out and look at it, or how does candy happen to, at your house? I always got the candy, put it on the table, picked out what I like. <laughs> And then we put the rest up. They could have, you know, like some in their lunch and some right. when they got home from school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they would. They say, "Mom, here you like this." And yeah, that so kind nice. of thing. Yeah. Did they sneak it? Um, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. But we would have a bowl on the top of the refrigerator mm -hmm. for months after Halloween. Well, that's what we do too, because. Um, my, with, we probably trick or treated more with my three younger ones than we did with the two older ones, and we would we just have a bowl. It's in the I put it in a in a cupboard though because mom doesn't want to. I want to keep it out of my sight. Sure, sure. So I know my kids have snuck it. I know y'all have snuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's what we do for lunches and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they're you know they're very generous. Of course, they that's get a little crazy. irritated sometimes because my husband tends to take stuff. He's uh -oh. like, my Tootsie Rolls are missing. <laughs> that is so funny. We're going to be back in just a moment to talk more Halloween with our moms here. <laughs> Stay with us. Good day. I'll be right back. <laughs> talking to Halloween with Mother Knows Best. And we, uh, we were talking uh, about ways to uh, check candy. Have you ever seen anything suspicious in candy before? Well, we, we've seen like, I, I don't know if I want to say suspicious, yeah. but there'll be homemade popcorn balls or homemade caramel apples, and they look so good, but you just don't know. Mm -hmm. And so we don't keep those. And, mm -hmm. I, and it's sad because I know a lot of work went into yeah. it, but, you know, you just truly never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that, that's our big thing. You know, we look at everything. If it's not, if it looks like it's been unwrapped and mm -hmm. rewrapped, or even um, just a loose wrapper or something, mm -hmm. I mean, we gotta be. You have to be careful. It's really kind of sad, and I hate throwing things away. You know, but candy. Have you ever seen anything else besides candy or food items that people were giving out? We, Go we've, ahead. we've gotten like little, you know, tracks sometimes, um, mm -hmm. and they're usually talking about the evil. Halloween, you know, because right. the roots of it and everything, mm -hmm. and spiritual kind of stuff. Um, but that's probably pretty much the only thing, other things my kids have got. Our kids got McDonald's bucks one year. It was like oh. a little coupon that was worth a dollar cool. at McDonald's, so they were oh. really excited about that. Wow. Yeah. There's a story going around right now on Twitter about one house, a mom is giving out papers to kids who she feels are overweight and it's a letter to their parents that says you know your child you should be ashamed of yourself because your child shouldn't be getting candy because they're obese and all this stuff what would uh, that's thought? just going to add to the trauma this uh, poor child already do you think the child doesn't know that she's overweight you know when we're overweight we know we're overweight mm -hmm. you don't the mirror tells us every time we look <laughs> in it you know and oh and kids especially girls think they're overweight even when they're not i, I mean, think you that's don't awful. need a stranger I, telling them i that. think we could talk a whole segment yeah. about that well, issue because mm -hmm. i think that's just awful Stop doing just that. shut your door mom, and do and, <laughs> and go to bed and and beat up your pillow or something <laughs> yeah. if you're that mean I mean, that's just me. Well, that's like she, an evil witch. She should put on an evil witch costume <laughs> yeah. while she does that, because to me, that's just outrageous. Yeah. Well, when yeah. tonight, you know, people, kids are going to be so excited. They're mm -hmm. going to be hyped up on sugar. They're going to be <laughs> excited about their costumes and being with their friends. How do you still let them have a good time, but get them to obey you? Because, you know, their mind is blah, mm. and you want them to listen, you know, stay here on the sidewalk or, you know, don't do this. How do you get their attention and make sure they're obeying you and, you know, still let them have fun? Well, I mean, two things. First of all, lay out the ground rules before you even go mm -hmm. um, and tell them, you know, whatever your parameters are, this is what it, what it is. Um, and secondly, go with your kids. I mean, I think if you're going to let your kids go trick-or-treating, even if there's a bunch of adults, um, you'll have fellowship mm -hmm. time together or something. Yeah. But um, don't just throw them out there and, you know, say, even giving them parameters. Um, just throw them out there. And, and if all that fails, tell them if they don't tighten up, you're going to eat all their candy. And bingo. Not that always any. works. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have to follow through on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. can, you know, that's not a problem. Do whatever no, you that take. No, that works. That always works. <laughs> if you tell them you're taking all their candy, oh, yeah. that works. They will calm yeah. it right down. Yeah. That's a smart idea. <laughs>
<laughs> tricks of the trade. That's yes. right. <laughs> How about some safety reminders? Is there anything that you all do to ensure their safety? We've heard, you know, put reflectors on their outfit. Do you do all of that? I mean, they're already standing out because they're already in a crazy yeah. outfit. But well, you want to keep thoughts? them not in dark outfits, mm -hmm. and you right. need to be careful of the masks that they don't hinder their vision and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I think that is important because you get kids out there, they're not thinking about looking for cars mm -hmm. coming or anything mm -hmm. like that. Also, don't approach a dark house. I mean, which pretty much makes sense, but you kids will do whatever, especially when there's a bunch of them together. Yeah. Um, you know, stay in a group, definitely stay, stay together. And, and, you know, again, be with the kids so that you can be an extra pair of eyes to see, mm -hmm. are there cars coming? Is this not a great street to, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever? Things like that, yeah. Okay, what are your favorite Halloween costumes that you ever had? Well, this is ranking right up there because it's pajamas, <laughs> so it's really comfy. I may be in it all day. Um, and let me think. Well, while you're thinking, when I was a kid, I had a princess like Glenda the Good Witch, and it made me feel like a princess. It was beautiful. Oh, but this, I have to say, is my second favorite. It's not really a costume, but my daughter spent a year in Korea, and this is a, a traditional beautiful. hanbok. Wow. I mean, it's a real uh, Korean costume. It's gorgeous. Dress, very, very pretty. Like, yeah. But real quick, we have 15 seconds. Elvira. I did Elvira, Hello. and I had the black wig, and got to be on Dr. Mad Blood, which was a little thing in a TV show, horror show, and dance with <laughs> That's Elvira. That well, I hope fun. you guys have a good Halloween tonight. Happy you all have you a very safe and festive Halloween night. We'll see you in the morning at 5 a.m. <laughs>